I am sure that you must have heard of the word pendulum before. Do you know what a simple pendulum is? Consider an object of small mass suspended from a fixed end by the means of a thread, wire or a string. This setup is called a pendulum. A simple pendulum is an idealized version of a physical pendulum. In a simple pendulum, the string under consideration is massless and the object tied to the end of the string is a point mass. Obviously, in the macroscopic world, there is no such thing as a massless string and it's also impossible for an object to have all the mass concentrated at a single point. However, if we take a sufficiently thin string like a thread and a very small object heavier than our string, such as a small stone or a metallic ball, we are close to having a simple pendulum. We will assume our setup to be a simple pendulum anyways. The object attached to one end of the string is called the bob of the pendulum. Initially, the pendulum is at rest. The position of the bob is what we call the rest position or the mean position. Now, what will happen if I give this bob a little push in either of the directions? You see that it starts moving back and forth. This back and forth motion is repetitive in nature and hence this motion of the bob is also called the oscillatory motion or the cyclic motion. Okay, so when does it complete one cycle? We say that the bob has covered one cycle or one oscillation when it moves from the mean to one extreme point, then to the other extreme and back to the mean. Let me repeat. From the mean to the extreme, to the opposite extreme, and then back to the mean is one oscillation. Now obviously due to air resistance, this bob will eventually come to a halt after some time. However, under ideal conditions, the motion will simply repeat itself forever in equal intervals of time. Such a type of motion is called periodic motion. It means that if a bob takes 3 seconds to complete the first cycle, then it will take 3 seconds to complete the second, the third, the tenth or the fiftieth cycle as well. Now this constant time period condition is more accurate for a simple pendulum where the object under consideration is small. This also depends on the size of the arc of the swing as well. It means that the bob should be displaced by a small amount for the time period to be the same throughout. There is one more interesting property of a simple pendulum. And this property is what makes them the best timekeepers. This property was first observed by the Galileo in the 17th century. If I were to tell this property in simple words, then I will frame it like this. Please go through it. Let me explain. Consider three cases where in each case a pendulum is displaced by a very small angle. Believe it or not, in all the cases, the time period of the pendulum will be the same. Yes, this is what this property tells us. Let's look at it in slow motion. Say all three move to the right first. You can tell from the angle that this displacement is slightly more than this one and this displacement is more than this one. After this, they all move to the left. And guess what? They come back to their mean positions together. At the same time. This tells us that the time it will take to complete one oscillation will be the same in all the cases. As I told you, this property was first found out by Galileo. Christian Huygens used this property to invent what's called the pendulum clock. Pendulum clocks were very popular from the 17th century when it was first made to the 1930s when they were later replaced by electric clocks. The reason this clock is called so is because it has a pendulum as its part. So even if the air resistance slightly affects the back and forth motion of a bob, the time period will not be affected. The clock will always show the accurate time.